Yeah, good morning. This is uh, Bang Bang Rail. Just uh, do a podcast for you this morning. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, listen, I was uh, talking yesterday about um, old school, yeah? There ain't no one out there, honestly, on the podcast now, that does the old school. You know what I mean? I remember all the old boys years and years ago when I was to go in Wandsworth and the Scrubs. You know, and, and, you, and, and you look at them faces, mate, and they were proper, proper gangsters. Proper faces. Today, they, today you go in a pub or a club, who is there? You tell me who is there. You don't know, no, there's no one. There ain't no, no, no one no more. Oh, well, watch him, watch him. There ain't none of that no more. There ain't no more gangsters about. There ain't no more bad people about. They're all drugs and it's all knives and, uh, you know what I mean? And, it, and it's like none of that stand-up fighting game, you know. But mind you, in my days it was a bit different. I mean, a lot of guns going about. I mean, and picture people would take you away and uh, take you in vans and bits and pieces like that and, really, and, and, and do the business on you, you know what I mean? So that was part of my, that was part of my game. Uh, that's what I used to do, uh, being, being I was a bit of an enforcer. And uh, that's what I used to do, pick people up in their hands, take them away and have a little talk to them, you know what I mean? In a dark place, in a place with water, and it's not nice, you know what I mean? It's not nice if you're sat in a chair and you've got floorboards underneath you and uh, and it's all water and you can hear water and it's damp and it's not nice and you can't see anything, mate. All you can do is smell the damp, hear the water, and that's it. I mean, there's nothing worse than that. Anyway, that is my game. Take people, have a little talk to them, make them pay their, their bills. You've got to pay your bills. If, if, if I give you something, if I give you something, you've got to pay your bill. If my people tell me that I've got two weeks with this, two weeks, I want it paid in 10 days. I'm going to give you them extra four days. I'm not going to say I'll be back in 14 days. I'll be back in 10 days and I will give you them four days. If them people... They never ever pay that bill, then they had to be took away, not by me, by other people, took away and taught the lesson. And it's nothing worse than being took away, having to talk to them, and they, don't, they still don't really understand what it's about. If I give you something and it's worth X amount, and you only give me this amount, What's happened to the X amount? I want it. So my people, then take, come and take you away for a little talk. And they talk to you on a chair, in a house, somewhere, in where there's water. And it's damp. And it ain't nice, mate. And it ain't nice. And that's what happens. I mean, I've heard of some terrible stories. I've heard of stories that people say, what? If you don't pay the bill, we're going to take a little bit of your thing off now and again, right? And we want you to make a phone call now to the people that got the money and tell them to pay. But there's no point in saying to you, what I'm going to do to you is clip some of your finger off, right? And, and that's it. You've got to show the people that what you're doing, you mean it. So clip. These people would do this. I don't know the people who do it, you know what I mean? Clip their fingers off, clip the top of their fingers off about half inch. And it ain't nice, mate. With rose cutters, it ain't nice. And then you mean it. And they know you mean it. And they're saying to you, this is day one. You've got three more days. I'll give you 14 days to pay the bill, 10 days to pay the bill, 14 days I've got, and I want it paid before that. Because if you don't pay me, then these people, in my case, I don't want to be where you are, and I don't want to be going through what you're going to be going through. Okay? So, clip these people to do what they've got to do. And this is what I was told. This is what I get to, this is what I get told. Whether or not it's true, I don't know. But they take the top to their finger, one of their fingers off. Are you going to make a phone call for this money to be paid? Yeah, but I ain't got it. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. The people that these people are doing and talking to them, they get to hear about this. Okay. Clip a little bit more of that finger. Listen, after a while, 
after a while, you got four fingers and one thumb. But after what they finish with you, you've got three fingers and one thumb. Now, what do you do? I would pay the fucking bill. I would pay that bill in an instant. People phone me up and say, look, Ray, they've told us this, they've told us that you've got to go to this address and pick the money up. I fly around there and the money be there. I don't want to get involved in violence. I don't want to get involved in that sort of thing. Because it always happens, you go in prison for the rest of your life. If you find out that it's you, or the people that I was with, or the other people that do it. Anyway, you get paid the lump sum of money. I don't know, 50 grand, 60 grand, 100 grand, or whatever. These people take a parcel of jewellery They've got to pay for it, as i got to suffer the consequences of it all. And I ain't suffering no consequences, because I don't want to be involved in the consequences. And they ain't nice, mate. And they ain't nice. And it got to a stage, some people, some people, I was told, that go somewhere, talk to these people, and they get very, very, very leery. Okay, we'll come back later on. We'll come back later and have a chat to you. Two people go in. Fuck them. They, you know, these people are going, oh, they, they ain't coming back. And what happens? They come back four-handed. Four-handed. This is what I've been told, mate, and it's true. I believe it's true. You must believe it's true. This is old school. And what they do? They put the people on the floor and they now gun them to the floorboards. They now gun them to the floor. It's terrible. Imagine. Imagine the pain that you must go through through that. I'm glad that I'm the person that's already collecting the money. I don't want to get involved in all this violence and whatever they go, that they're doing. It's other people. It's other people. I'm just a money collector. That's all I do. I collect the money. What people do, they do. I don't even know them. I don't even know these people. You know what I mean? I don't want to know them. And then they get paid. I've even known, I've even known someone to be stapled, not nailed, stapled with his staple guns to a tree. To a tree in the middle of nowhere. To a tree. Leave them there. These people leave them there. We'll be back in a day. But you can imagine being stapled to a tree in the middle of nowhere. Foxes and what not have you running around like lunatics. They might be frightened of human beings, but they're not frightened of human beings that ain't moving too much. They can't run after them. So what happens? The fox is coming for a nibble. They're going to come in for a nibble. Spiders, other insects come in for a nibble. And then you go back a day later, or these people go back a day later, and these people have got this missing, that missing, that missing. They pay the bill. And after a while, you know, after a while, you've been an enforcer to collect money, people, believe me or not, pay it. They pay the money that they've got to pay. It's not me, I'm just, a, I'm just a person who goes and talks to these people, I'm just the enforcer, who goes and talks to these people and tells them they have got to pay the bill. They've got to pay the bill, otherwise they've got to suffer the consequences. The consequences are the people that come down to do what they've got to do. And that's what happens. And that's exactly what happens. You know, and this is what I used to do. I used to go all around, the, all around the country collecting money. And it's something that I had to do. And it's something that I've done very, well, very good at it. I was very good at it. You know what I mean? When I worked with Jimmy Tibbet in Lewisham, I was fighting for Jimmy Tibbet as a street fighter, illegal fighter, or whatever you're going to call it, yeah? I mean, the unlicensed fighting... We could fight anybody because it was unlicensed. I used to fight mostly doormen. People on the door, 
I was to fight them. Come on, mate, there's a lot of doormen can have fights. There's a lot of doormen that are pussies, you know what I mean? They shouldn't even be there. Right? And I was to fight a lot of people, and I fought a lot of men, and I beat a lot. Loads, loads I beat. Loads. I was good at it, you know what I mean? I was to train very hard, run very hard, and spar very hard. And I wasn't afraid to get hit on the chin, because that's what it's about. If you get hit on the chin, mate, and you rock your head, and you keep fighting, you're going to be the bollocks. If you get hit on the chin, hit the floor and stay on the floor, you're fucking a wanker. You know what I mean? Tyson Fury. Look at Tyson Fury, mate. Gets hit on the chin, goes on the floor every time to the count of nine. He gets up and he comes and fights. That is a man. That is a man. That there is a proper, proper man. He ain't... He's back in the day. He's back in the day. He's not now, mate. He's back in the day. In the 60s and the 70s, when the fighters were fighters, doing 15 rounds. 15 rounds. Getting hit on the chin, going down, getting up, getting down, and, and then getting going. You could go on the floor as many times as whatever, but all of a sudden they put a wall in, three times, finished. You know what I mean? But he's a proper man. But that's the sort of people... I mean, I should go down to Beckett with Jimmy. Jimmy Tibbet. And... I mean, I, at first when we went down, I wasn't with Jim. I was just to go down there by myself and train. Train really odd, you know what I mean? Because I used to train with pros before, good pros before. Like I told you, Bugner, Billy Ed, good fighters. I never sparred around with John or Gardner. I used to see him in the ring all the time. Never got to do that. Pat McCann, I moved around with Pat McCann. Very good fighter, Pat, mate. Pat was a good man. I mean, Bobby Neal was his trainer. Uh, Bobby Neal wanted to get hold of me, wanted me to turn pro, but my mate Georgia Whelan said, nah, he, he ain't ready yet. He ain't ready for the, for the pro game. I thought I was. John o Gardner had it his own way. He had people, good people behind him, people that give him money so he didn't have to work. All he had to do was train. That's what you got to do if you want to get on in life, yeah? If you want to be a good fighter, you've got to get that people behind you, mate. You can't do it otherwise. To work and do it is really hard. But anyway, um, I was doing other things to get money, but I wasn't, you know, anyway. And then, and then I'm down at Beckett, Jimmy comes in one day, sees me, takes me. I'm fighting all the time with Jimmy. Fight, Jim, me and Jimmy just fighting all everywhere. And uh, a lot of clubs were fighting in, a lot of fight, fight. I mean, I've had quite a few fights in the Cat's Whiskers in Streatham. And there's a few other fights that I've done uh, in Guildford. That, uh, uh, that uh, Kevin Paddock, I can't get hold of Kevin, I don't want to say Kevin, but Kevin Paddock um, and Sid Paddock and other fighters I fought, you know, and uh, all over, really. Uh, but, you know, it's like, it is, is what it is. We fight or we fight, and it's like, you know, you do it in them day, in, 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 in the early 70s, late, sorry, late 70s, early 80s, and, uh, you know, I mean, I even had my own, my, my own, my own fights in Acton Town Hall. I mean, one looked in the archives, I've got it, I showed you, but I'm now trying to get the pictures because I've got a book um, going to be done very soon, and it is very soon, maybe in a week, two weeks, it's on the, on, on the cards to be done, and uh, I need photographs. So anybody out there, um, like Colin Crack, or other people that, that, that fought me, and uh, uh, Bob Coleman, who was my promoter with me, you know, there must be photos. People out there have got, must have got photos of me fighting in the boot, you know, when, when we go to uh, uh, Boathouse in, in, in Richmond, uh, sorry, in Kew, the castle, Richmond, Cheeky Pieces, all these sort of places. They must have people who've got cameras. They must have people that, that know me that have got cameras, that, that took pictures in the food market, you know, because believe it or not, mate, when I was in the food market, there were some proper, proper, proper people in that food market, mate. Proper people, proper people, mate. Anyway, let's go back to Jim. When I was uh, doing the enforcement work with Jimmy Tibbet, um, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy got me fighting um, all the time. And uh, one day uh, I was with him, went to a pub in Deptford, and I think it was the Harp and Heron, I'm not quite sure. Um, I'm not quite sure, really. Well, well, I think it was, I'm not quite sure. And um, met some people in it, Eddie Richardson. Terry Coombs, Terry Sharp, and some people talking about um, money that people owed them, you know. I don't know what it was for, 
Uh, we went down to meet, um, uh, what's you call it, uh, Johnny Critterton in Leighton, in, in Lingfield. And uh, he lived in a big, big house. Uh, he was one of the torturers for, the, for, for, for that lot there. Yeah. And, um, you know, we went down to see him. He gave us a few addresses that we had to go and see, Jimmy. And uh, Cliff Fields, I think Cliff came a couple of times, I'm not quite sure. Got big old memories, you can't remember too, that, too much. And we go and collect it, go and collect the money. Uh, a couple of times, believe it or not, mate, I've, uh, my old arse has gone a little bit. Uh, when you go and meet people, they put on their handguns and whatnot, have you? And you say, okay, fair enough. No, we, we, I don't want that, you know what I mean? And we go back. Listen, if someone pulls an handgun and they don't use it, they're in trouble, mate. They're in trouble. If they put a shotgun and they don't use it, they're in trouble. Well, so are you. I mean, I'm thinking you'd be well in trouble, but you're hoping that they ain't going to use it. But if they don't use it, mate, which they didn't, they very rarely did, because I'm still here. Right, but when they did, maybe he was running down the road or whatever, or running in the fields, but we go back. I mean, me and Jimmy and Cliff Fields was an enforcer. We was fucking a bit near the mark, a bit near the mark. Jimmy Tibbet taught me, taught me how to enforce. He was the business, mate. He was... He was so good at what he did. Because Jim wasn't really a wicked man, as far as wicked goes, yeah? Jim would knock him out, left, up, right, up, whatever he would do, he would knock him out, Jim. He could bang. You know, if you get it on the chimney, Jimmy Tibbet, you go over. It's the geezer was, the, was an animal with his, with his hands. But the difference was with was, was, was Jim and me, I used to go in and do something about it, you know? do bad things to people to get paid. I mean, I remember me and Jimmy going to a club. I think I might have told you. We're going to a club, it's a spill. Well, I mean, quite a few, mo most of these debts we used to collect. Sorry, it's the washing machine going crazy, man. Most of these debts we used to collect were from spills. From the spills. And the spills, people owed a lot of money. You're talking about a lot of money. Sorry about this. It's, um, hold up. Hold up. Please stop, 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 stop. Um, let's stop it. Hold up. Let's stop it this time. Stop it. Yeah, so anyway, as I say, uh, go to the, go go to the spills, and uh, there's a lot of, lot of people. It's all down, it's all down to uh, as I say to um, people that owe money. You know, people play cards, and they lose a lot, a lot of money. They lose a lot, a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. You know what I mean? It's not like um, it's grains and grains that these people bet, and if they ain't got the money to pay it. Me and Jim will take the car. We take the car. We we'll take something that's worth the money: the rings, the watches, the, the chains, the, everything. You know, and as I said, there's a couple of people that thought me and Jimmy Tibbet was assholes. <laughs> the worst thing they could ever think. Because I'm telling you, when Jimmy Tibbet walked into a spill, people's assholes would fall out because they knew that he's coming there to do something. You see the film about the pun when he's round the table with a baseball bat, and there's someone there that's done something to him. And what does he do? He smashes him to pieces with a baseball bat. Yes or no? You must have seen it. It's the same thing with Jimmy. Jimmy the same thing, but well, Jimmy would bash him up with his fist. I used to do the opposite, you know? And then Jimmy taught me a lot, a lot, a lot about this enforcement work, you know? We go, I've been to houses, mate. Listen, where was it a spill once? There was his two brothers, Larry, Larry fucking bastards. Thought Jimmy Tibbet and myself, we really couldn't do nothing about it. In the end of the day, one of the guys went over the balcony, three fours up. He didn't die. He didn't die. But believe me, let me tell you something, he was in a bad way. 
He was in a bad way. I think he smashed his legs. He'd done his shoulders. It was lucky. He was very, very lucky that his head didn't do too much damage to that. But he was in a bad, bad way. That's because he owed money, mate. And is it worth it for, what, five grand, ten grand to go over the balcony and fucking lose your legs and your arms? Because you're never going to be the same. And we used to do it all the time, Jim. When we used to go to the spills, Deptford, Catford, Woolies, Bermondsey, all round here, Blackheaths. And then we got to the stage where I used to, I used to um, knock about some guys in Jamaica Road and um, Jamaica Road, and there's a, there's a big couple of families there. There's a family there that owned a, owned a pub called the Sugarloaf. Uh, there was a little family got to knock muck about with. There was all on robbers, very good on robbers. You've got my mate Peter Kelly, that I love Peter. Um, he was a dangerous man, mate. He was a big man, powerful man. I was in prison with him. Very dangerous. Very dangerous, mate. There was guys at Bermondsey. I'll tell you what it was about Bermondsey, yeah? Most people in Bermondsey, around that that, 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 that that side of London, they was good armed robbers. They're the ones that done the Bank of America and Bitch Matt and all them sorts of things. Unbelievable. Proper, proper armed robbers. You get areas that do certain things, and South East London, Bermondsey, around that area, Broccoli, all around there, bad people, mate. Good people on the pavement. You know, as it happens, I wasn't on the pavement. I was just doing enforcing work with Jim. I mean, his boy, young Jim, don't remember his dad like that. He remembers his dad. He's doing a book about his dad. He, he remembers his dad's a gangster, you know, but he doesn't remember the things that I remember, things that Jim and me and Jim used to do. He doesn't remember he's too young and he wasn't really involved. Kept Jim, Jimmy kept him out of it. I didn't really hear, hear too much Jimmy talking about his boy, Perhaps because he didn't want him involved in anything, you know, pushed him aside, which you can't blame him. His son, he doesn't want his son to get involved in gangsterism as such, even though young Jimmy's 